Welcome back everyone to the Beginner's Guide to Factorio. This is episode number five. In the previous episode, we covered uh, producing steel. We ferried that over one to the main bus, but also, whoops, turret is being engaged. Ah, okay, good. So we'll get to that in a moment. Um, put our steel over to our military ammo production center. And then after that, we went up here to establish green science. And that was because in the previous, previous episode, episode number three, we did red science. So now after, after episode three and four, we have both green and red science done, which means we can choose whatever we want for research, as long as it doesn't have anything beyond green and red. And that is a lot of different research. And without having to worry about how it'll get done, we know that it will just get done. So let's go ahead, since this episode will be a lot about the military, we'll do bullet damage number two. Um, okay, so then that's what we did last episode, but also at the very end, you can see that I put a turret down here. I mean. Probably can't see it very well because it's we're extremely zoomed out but right over here we have one gun turret just to the bottom of our uh, our boilers burning the water for our steam engines and I did put that there because I was constantly attacked even off camera waiting just trying to get everything set up for this episode uh, I kept getting attacked so I just put that gun turret there we've also been attacked from this area here which leads me to believe that we don't actually have the map scouted out correctly um, the way Biter bases spawn is not uh, it's not perfectly clear to me, but they do spawn close to your base, and apparently they have spawned closer to our base uh, after our radars, which were now down to two because two were destroyed and I never replaced them. Um, we're, they're not they didn't scan the area where these biter bases were before they spawned, and now they're going to keep going around the perimeter. So unfortunately, they'll never catch these biter bases. <laughs> so we'll just have to go and do that ourselves. But let's start with first things first, which is to talk about the few things I missed in the last episode. The other thing, so that, I mean, there was that gun turret that I put down. And the other thing is I didn't complete this. So this is kind of like the messy situation this looked like. I What I want to mention about this is um, we have, this is green science production, and we need one transport belt and one inserter for that which means that all of this is for green science. This is for green science, which means this and half of this is for green science. However, I have one and a half copper um, wire assembly machines feeding this green circuit, feeding this inserter, also being fed by this, green, uh, this uh, gear. And those are not part of the green science assembly um, module. These are actually my own personal things. So what I normally do is leave this wooden chest with just 200. So it's all the way capped over here. So you can see it's there's where I want it. I'll take those last two. But this one I have up to 600 electronic circuits being stored. Uh, and this is because I may need in a pinch some electronic circuit. Similarly, I have a space open for six um, inserters. The reason why those aren't being produced right now is because I neglected in the last episode to have a blue inserter grab iron for um, inserter production. Now everything is working here, but these are not working. Why? Because well, we didn't end up doing anything here. Uh oh. Okay, I thought I heard the alarm, but that was just a false alarm. Okay, bullet damage two is done. Let's go ahead and get advanced material processing. That's another thing that I want to work on eventually. So. Looks like we're gonna need a lot more blue and fast inserters. So I'll just start producing those now. We'll get two here, we'll get one here, we'll get one like this, and we want this being dumped up there. So this is all good. The only thing we're missing now is I actually want this blue inserter to go on this side. Let me take that away. Because I want a red inserter dumping gear down here eventually. I don't really need it at first, so I'm gonna leave this like this, but eventually I'll put, as soon as this inserter starts finishing the six it needs, I also like to have a small storage of gear wheels. So this has to work double time. It, it's not enough for it to su supply a red inserter putting into a box and an inserter if they're both working at 100%, but this will eventually cap. And the reason why I'm doing this whole thing is probably, I don't know if it's obvious, but just in case it isn't, I want a personal supply, a personal cash for myself. So now anytime when I'm running around, when I'm not sure if I have enough transport belt, I'll just come up here and control left click, or maybe I'll shift click on two stacks of inserters, although that's really already too much, so let me take put one back. Um, 
yeah so this is just so i have a personal supply so maybe i want some more yeah i'll actually will take some more electronic circuit and can never have too much transport belt last uh as soon as this is produced well i'll just put it down now we're gonna want uh just a hundred gear wheels being stored here so i've manipulated this a little bit but that was just because the original template i had down was just that just a template just like an in order for me to size up how wide this would be so I could make my military production. But without further ado, it is time for us to get to the military stuff. So let's do it. Now, we've known that there's a tax coming from the east. What we have to do is basically just walk to the east and try to find where the biter races are. We have a pretty good vision radius, um, so we should be able to detect them pretty quick. I use my mini map, so I'm just looking up here. Eventually we'll just see, okay, there's one there. And we'll go kill that. Actually, the, oh, another one down there. So, uh, one thing I mentioned is that you can just put these uh, normal rounds, normal firearm magazines in, and it should switch to the other one when you run out. Actually, that's not true. So you're gonna see I'm gonna run out very quickly here. And I need to go and shift click this in. Now when this one runs out, I think it auto loads the next batch of red, but it doesn't auto load, um, it doesn't auto load from yellow to red, which is unfortunate. I thought it did, so it must do it for maybe like vehicles or something. All right, so we're now mowing down all these guys, and the main goal here is just obviously to take care of these big building like um, structures, um, things. <laughs> these are what are actually spawning the the biters. So I'm just holding down spacebar to fire, and we're not really taking any damage, which is good, of course, good. And you know the rate of spawning is much lower than my rate of actually killing the bases and killing the other guys, so. Not a big deal. Now the little purple orbs that these bases are dropping are alien artifacts, and those are what, wow, that was a lot of purple. Um, those are gonna be our mechanism for producing purple science packs, which we eventually will do. I know rockets use them eventually, there it is. So these alien science packs, I think one alien artifact produces five or 10 um, purple science packs, alien science packs, and you need that for some of the more advanced research just to give you an idea what those purple orbs are used for. They are very useful though, so we gotta make sure we collect them. So this appears to be the bases that were attacking us from the, the northeast, and possibly that one that we eliminated to the south was the one that was also attacking us um, by the boilers and the steam engines. So we'll mop this up. And the one last thing I forgot to mention, I, thought, I think I started to talk about um, respawning mechanisms. It used to be that, okay, obviously, these bases are not supposed to respawn in your base. Like, it would be a little bit weird if right in the middle, right here, a biter base just suddenly appeared. I mean, it would be kind of immersion breaking and unless there was a whole backstory about these guys being kind of like, almost like sandworm type people popping up from the earth. <clears throat> but I, I don't think that's the case. So, excuse me, I had to take a drink. So they try to make it so that the biter bases only respawn outside of your vision area. It used to be that they would look for the nearest part of your factory. Note that we've now put a power pole down over here. They would look for the nearest part of your factory and they would avoid it by some distance. So people ended up going out and putting power poles down at bases they've killed. And the base therefore would not respond at that point because the power pole counted as part of your factory. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. <laughs> I don't know what the mecha mechanism is now, but basically you are able to be attacked from, uh, I mean, you. As far as I know, biter bases can respawn on top of those power poles or near them. So the only reason why this is disappointing to me, I'm just, I just am a little leery of making the player feel unrewarded by clearing a base. If you go clear a base and then by the time you get home, that base has respawned again, that's an, obviously an extreme case, but that would really make you feel like, wow, excuse me, sorry about that. That would really make you feel like, wow, I didn't really do anything. That kind of takes away my sense of accomplishment. So I'm a little bit, um, yeah, just a little bit leery about that. Uh, to me, I prefer to be re feel like rewarded. You go over, you kill the base, and then you feel rewarded. Like, okay, now I, I bought myself some real time. So I think that it might be still okay because the biter bases, I'm not sure how quickly they respond, but if they respond quickly enough, it would be pretty frustrating for me. Now, that said, we've actually, I've been attacked from the north, so let me actually run north and see if there's another biter base we have to look for. I'll just look up here. I think maybe, oh, nope, is that that one? So I'm gonna go back around to the right. I, 
think this is the one that's been attacking me here and I also got attacked over here off camera. Lots of attacks because we're producing a lot of pollution. And you can see that as the radar continues to scan, we're getting bigger and bigger biter bases off in the distance. Um, and as we produce more and more pollution, we're going to have to actually worry about those. But for now, we're okay just eliminating these small bases. Where are you going, buddy? Come back over here. Strange. He was... I probably shouldn't have killed him. He was the peaceful one. Maybe we could have talked with him, come to some diplomatic arrangement. Um, okay, wow, that is a lot of orbs. So what, how many do we get? 56. That's a good amount. So we got 56 orbs, which is, I think, 560 science packs total. Okay, that's not even that amazing. We definitely pull something down here. And these take like 200 each, so. <laughs> Alright, we aren't doing new research, so let's get I think a good one to do next. Let's do walls. Absolutely walls. I definitely want walls. And that'll happen really fast because, what is this? 10 seconds per thing, and we only need 10 of them to work. So, there it is. Now, what do we want next? Well, gates we don't really need. Um, they're nice. It, the whole tower um, defense aspect of this game if it was less, if there was more choke, choke points you could take advantage of, or I don't know, um, just building long, huge swaths of wall is a little bit annoying because you outgrow the, the area that they're defending very quickly. All right, so instead of that, we'll do bullet shooting speed two because that only requires red and that may slightly diminish the, our pollution profile. Good, so we spent about 10 minutes on the military, which is about what I expected. Now let's get to circuit production. So originally I had the blueprint where we only had one line going down. So I had these two lines going up. You can see the template is still there on the side. And then I had one line going down, but this is not actually what we're gonna want to do. Um, I want to have two separate outputs because I, I obviously, I want two lines on the bus. Oh, okay, one sec. Sorry, as I was saying, you want two lines on the bus. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it in this manner is because four of these um, assembly machines is going to be enough to almost like almost completely saturate one of these transport belts um, it may not completely but it's the same way that even when the iron or the copper doesn't completely saturate at first if it has any time to, to stop and like build up on itself it definitely will completely saturate the line and then you'll be you'll be that will be good um, especially this is okay because we have two lines of it so even if we don't have a complete um, we don't have two completely compact lines um, we'll just do the same thing where we split before and then split off and then split back so we should always have enough to send to whatever we need um, and the reason why I'm making two lines for this just like with two with iron and copper is because circuit is used in a lot of stuff Okay, so um, I know that we're not going to do this. We, we're going to move this, so we might as well just go like this. And I'm going to move it back by one, because I'm going to have two lines going in. One is going to be the two lines just in the middle. One going up, which is going to be our iron input, which is the thing I, ne I neglected. And then each of these groups of four, and I'm talking about four per side. Again, I'm talking four per side, so this is eight total. Um, each of these groups of four per side get their own transport belt. One goes in down here, and you can see that one is already, already, I already wired it to the transport belt, I mean to the bus. And this one is not quite done. I'll go ahead and do that on camera, but uh, let's try to get this side set up like so. Now, so we're just gonna shift everything over one. Okay, that's off like this. That's not right at all. Okay, it's always it always looks wrong to me. This does it doesn't look right, but it should be down like this. Very good. Now we also want to do the transport the electric power in the middle, and it's connected on the far left side. And normally, what I would like to do with these, as I've always done, so you can see over here, it's done as well. I like to put this right in the middle, and then um, it's the blue inserters take from either side of this one for the middle and then the closest one. So this, you can see by itself, it just barely nicks the top of this and it also just barely nicks the bottom of this. So if I put the blue there, blue there, and then I can put the blue on either one of these to get the copper into here. So we'll control shift right click, shift left click, get all these and we'll do these as well since I see they aren't done. Right click, shift left click. Whoop. We did bullets shooting speed too, that's good. Let's um. Let's go with what do we want next? This is a good one. 
let's do this. Red. I like red um, belt, which is fast, faster belt. So we'll do this one. It always feels like shift left click should be copy and right click should be paste. I don't know why, but <laughs> it's backwards in my head always. All right, so let's do this now. One, two, one, uh, either side, and then one, sorry, one, two, and this one here, this one here. One, oops, not that one. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Same thing, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. There it is. Now this, uh, obviously we decided not to use the transport belt on the inside because that would be if we only had one in the middle. Now we're shifting everything to the right by one. Let's get this one out of the way. Move this all the way up. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna want this here as well. We'll see that in a moment. We'll also just go ahead and while we're at it, get this one to go up. Okay. Everything else is good. We have our output line, which is going underneath and connecting back to the main bus. This one, mind you, I am using, if we call this line one, I'm using line one uh, for steel, then two and three, are, the middle ones are gonna be, um, so this is actually messed up. I made a mistake here. We don't want them to be two and three. I mean, it's fine that this is there actually, but I want it to be like this. We want them to be on the, on the same side just like we have copper and iron, so that was just a mistake. Um, because if we wanna split off, it's a lot easier to do it if we can just do it at the edge like we already have shown for both copper and iron. So we'll just go ahead and leave line two open. So steel, actually we could just even make steel line three and then we'll have something else which we can add to the line later. Um, I, I don't know what we'll do. It, it doesn't really matter. I'll think about it off camera to like over analyze the best solution <laughs> and I'll get back to you in the next episode. But for now, this already makes a lot more sense to me. We don't have the output completely correct yet. There we go. Okay, so output one's good, output two's good. I think we also need to put this here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we lack power right here, so we just need a power pole. And now, aha, we don't have power to this side. Well, that's easy enough. One there and one there, very good. Now the whole thing has power and it shouldn't have been like a, like a surprise to anybody what we are gonna do here because we just, we're just kind of duplicating the same thing we did over here without the top part. We don't need the inserters, all we're doing is making the circuits. So basically we have the same, same kind of setup going but without the top part. Um, okay, so now we need to drop far away. Obviously we're pulling from the closest one I think we're doing it this way. Yeah, we're pulling from the closest one and we're dropping away at the farthest one. So the easy way to remember this is that you can have your blue inserter facing the same way and you can just drag across. Cause it's gonna dump here and it's gonna pull in here. Dump, pull, dump, pull. And exactly the same, but in the opposite direction for our red. Okay, logistics two is done. Let's try to get, well, let's get optics because it leads to other fun stuff, okay. Now the same thing with the red, we're gonna do in the opposite direction. So this has to pull dump, pull dump, pull dump, pull. damn, that was quick. Uh, what do we want next? Landfill's kind of interesting, we can fill in water. Okay, same thing there. And exactly the same up here. I, I don't think it matters which one we start first. So we'll have it, I guess, pulling close. Dumping, uh, this is, okay, whatever. We did it this way, that's fine. We'll just do it for all the rest of them. We'll do, uh, whoops, red on the bottom, blue on the top. It doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. Now we just reverse the order. Ta-da, we're all done. Now the only thing we're missing, obviously, is the connected inputs. <laughs> we need our copper and iron. So I already set up this one, I just need to Delete that and do that. Okay, copper is going. Same thing here. We have almost finished it. We just need to do the split off. Okay, that's that. And last thing, same thing here. We just need to 
take this one and split and we're done because I did that preparation off camera. We've already seen how to do these splits so it's not like a surprise to anybody at this point. Good. Um, now, as soon as this gets up here and as soon as we decide to put down some more blue inserters, my mistake. And this one's a little tricky. I, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but because we want this one to be able to reach up here, that's the only way we can um, connect these two. If this was in the middle, this line and this line just wouldn't connect. It's too far away. So I shifted this one up because this bottom line of, wow, that's quick. These are finishing fast. Okay, we'll want oil processing for next turn. So, I mean, next episode. Anyways, I just shifted this one up so that it could reach here, which will supply power for the, um, the top. And then um, again, this one won't reach this one. So I just put one middle here. And that's what inspires our underground transport anyway, because we already knew we'd need underground to go underneath the copper. Okay, so now let's actually get these to do something because they are not doing anything yet. And there we go. I like to leave them as spaced out as I possibly can. So uh, I don't know why it just has the feeling that it's better that way. Now, as you can see, these are definitely not saturated lines, right? We, we can see that this is not a saturated line at all, but that's okay. We still think that this having two lines, um, I guess you can kind of think of it this way. This is like a capacitor and there's two different measurements for the capacitor, how fast it charges and how much energy does it store. This is the same thing about our bus. This um, may not charge very fast, but at least it stores a lot because it's too wide. If we made this one single line, what we could have done if we really wanted is make two different modules exactly like this and only have one single line. Like we can just do the test real fast. What if we just didn't went down with this? Let's see what happens. Let me also just hoover up some of this so that we can get a good idea of what's happening. Oh, went too far. All right, so let's see what happens when the entire thing is assembled. We have a pretty compact line. So th this is obviously better if we were to use all of them at the same time. This would be much better. But I'm still okay with splitting it because I don't right now. I can always go back to this design later and then later add a separate module like this for the second line. But right now I just want the, the battery to have a large um, storage capacity. And right now we're probably not gonna use green circuits as fast as they're produced. So it's okay for us to spread them apart like we've done. And then later, you know, when we see that this is just not enough, we'll eliminate this line altogether and we'll um, actually do a completely new production for the very top line or line four, as I was calling it. So for now, we'll just switch this back over there and we should be good. So I probably need to get rid of some of this circuit. Well, we'll use it eventually, who cares? So very good. I think that's everything I want to cover cover in this episode. Um, okay, I guess there's one other thing I should mention that right now, as of right now, we're running out of space and we have to choose whether to go north or south. The other option is we could technically, if we wanted, actually use our new landscaping thing to build into the water. It's pretty neat. So it requires dirt, I think. A uh, stone, I mean. Yeah. So it requires 20 stone for one single thing, which is incredible. It's a uh, quite expensive. <laughs> So we can build exactly two of them. And this is exactly as small as it sounds. Ta-da, <laughs> 20 stone did just that. So you can tell that it's gonna need a lot of stone to finish this off, but little pockets of water like right here, those are the kind of things I definitely wanna um, smooth out. There's just no advantage of using that. So there's no advantage of keeping that there. Anyway, um, one idea if you wanted to go crazy with landscaping is to just build landscape this lake just go crazy landscaping it. And then you can continue your bus in here. You could even continue your bus and you can see if we were at this height in, we would be completely protected by this moat of water, which the aliens cannot cross. There's no flying aliens, at least not yet. So um, if you built this moat into here, it would be like the perfect place for your factory. Maybe, maybe in the future, much later, we'll consider doing that with a very, very high pollution type stuff. Um, I don't know what that would be, but for now, it's too much. It'll take too long for me to do all the stone necessary to move in here. It's a fun idea to entertain, but we'll probably just head south. I think I'll head south because it looks like there's more water we can use as a natural barrier, which is always good for building walls and stuff. So the idea will be to clear out this and keep our factory going down. And this is a huge amount of space just going down this much. Um, as far as supplies go, it looks like we have other iron over here, here, here. 
Lots of iron. I think there's less iron up here, which is another motivation for us to head south. So, yeah. All right, so that's going to conclude this episode. What did we do? We did our first, our combat. Got some uh, ammunition. I guess we already had it on hand. Went over. I showed you. I guess we actually forgot to telephone pole this top one, huh? Anyways, so we put telephone, victory poles, as they're called, victory flags, down at all these bases where stuff had spawned. Even though that probably no longer works. See, the dead corpses are still there. Um, so we'll just drop one up here as well. And then after that, we went down and we did, we established our uh, green circuit production. And I've shown you that we probably are making this uh, four for each of these, um, four per side for each of these is not enough in the long run. But we're not going to be using circuit enough right now that we need to worry about combining this into one line. When we do need to worry about that, we'll create another center just like this with eight per side just to go to the top line here. And that'll be especially important if we, for example, want to filter this directly into red circuit production. Alternatively, we could just rebuild our green circuits with iron and with copper, and then uh, this green circuit would will probably stay on the line. So in the next episode, what we can expect to do is shift our bus and get into oil processing. I know for sure we'll do oil processing, and maybe we'll also make a, a sojourn into this southeast area which looks like a huge base and get ourselves into some trouble i'm not sure so i'll come back and I'll, I'll let you know what the new ideas are at the beginning of the next episode but for now thanks for watching and oh what are we gonna do off camera off camera let's do advanced oil processing uh this is actually a really nice one let's do electronic uh, electric energy distribution that's a good one i'm gonna do this one I'm going to do advanced oil processing as well. Oh no, I'm not gonna do this one because this takes blue science. I don't have that yet. So we'll do electric energy distribution. We'll do fluid handling. I'll grab this because it just speeds up. Um, and I'll probably grab all the military stuff like bullet shooting uh, speed, bullet damage. I'll get grenades. I'll get the shotgun stuff, even though I'm not gonna be using a shotgun until we have combat shotgun. I'll do the gun turret upgrades. I'll do a lot of the, the combat stuff because it's not really important and sure, plastics. I'll just do everything we see here that I can, which is everything I think except for advanced. And can we do, oh, we can't even do solo. I'm gonna do all these things. Exactly all these things will be done except for uh, advanced oil processing. And I won't do anything that's not yellow on this list. So until then, thanks for watching and take care.